Father, we honor you. We lift your name on high. We extol your name. We magnify you. You are worthy, O oh God, to receive all glory, to receive all honor, all adoration. We express our love our gratitude, our appreciation to you this morning. What a day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, for the Father, for the new light you shine upon us. The new light of the revelation of your Son. Thank you, Father, for the understanding of the workings of your Spirit. Once again, you're leading us to a place we've never been before. We rejoice in you. We celebrate you. We are grateful. I am grateful for all the things that you are bringing to our understanding in this season. Thank you, Father, for men and women who will be joining us this morning. Beloved friends, co-sojourners who will be connecting with us this morning, I pray, O oh God, that once again that your word will penetrate deep within the very recesses of our hearts. That we will not just be hearers of the word only deceiving ourselves, but rather become true practitioners of your truth. <clears throat> we bless you, O oh God. We lift your name on high. Oh, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Friends, may the peace of God rest upon you this morning. May the joy of the Lord be your strength wherever you are this morning. If you are joining us, if you have the time to spend, you know, the next uh, uh, few minutes maybe an hour with us, I can assure you that you will not regret it. I believe this morning once again that the Lord will lead us further, take us yonder, and unveil to us the patterns, the standards, and of course, the blueprint of his intention regarding our day. Wherever you are, welcome once again. Of course, you know my name is Isaiah Phillips. I can't tell her we have been following the pathway of the Lord for a while now, one of the things that we have sought to, to do on this platform is to live on the cutting edge of heaven's de desire and program for our life. I do believe that the prophetic, which of course is the framework and the foundation of this commission, is designed to reveal the mind of Christ to show us the divine order of how God wants us to live life on earth. Ministry and ministry gift are irrelevant when we are dead. So all that the Lord has given to us are assigned for us to use, to use and to utilize while we are on earth. So we don't really have eternity to learn the things we need to learn while we have these windows of opportunity while God is impressing upon our hearts certain truth that will allow us to please him then we need to really yield ourselves and surrender ourselves I was reading the scripture yesterday as you know I was sharing some few nuggets on TikTok in Judges chapter 6 the Bible said of the children of Israel that they had to cry to the Lord after the Midianites had really dealt with them, ravished them, took, you know, everything they ever worked for. The Midianites basically sought to control the economy 
the nation of Israel. And in their oppressions, the Bible says they cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard their cry and, and sent them a prophet. This is how God responded. The Bible says he sent them a prophet and the prophet then began to explain to them how God has helped them, how God has brought them out. Please don't mind my voice is a bit, you know, cracky this morning. I've been praying and uh, in fact it's much better now some an hour ago, I thought I would not be able to broadcast. So please do not mind my voice. Just try to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. And the Bible said that God sent the children of Israel a prophet. And I believe that God is still sending, amen, his prophets to our generation, to his church, to our lives. And we have to change how we look at the ministry of a prophet, how we understand or how we even relate or connect to what can be defined as the prophetic office vis-a-vis -vis the prophetic ministry. I believe in my heart, at least with the way the Lord is dealing with me, my sense of engaging the things of God is become even more 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 tense and intense there's a there's a there's a weight there's a sense of demand upon my own life to bring clarity our work is within the hearts of men within the hearts of the nations I mean oftentimes you look at people everybody's going somewhere you know everybody's running somewhere there's hustle and bustling there's movement here and there you look around and you see all these massive houses you see these big cars and you see you know if you go to the cbds i mean you see skyscrapers i mean you can you can be immense and be carried away in the midst of all of these things that are screaming at you and actually think that life ends there and you know of recent the Lord began to minister to me your ministry your message is within the hearts of men so I'm not really bothered about your look I mean, Bible says Jesus is not you know is not moved by you know the look of men men looks at the outward and that's why we invest so much on the outward but for those whom God has called who are you know the vessels and the instrument of God who are you know the voice of God in the earth they see beyond you know the facade the physical they see deep into the hearts of men and this is the reason why the Bible says God sent the nation of Israel a prophet because prophets are not bothered about whatever it is on the outside as much as that, those are important but we are concerned about the issues of our heart the issues of the heart that is what concerns God the most because when people are truly changed from the heart, it's only a matter of time that the outward aligns. But we can seek to change the outside, but if the inside is not touched, is unchanged, is unreformed, is untransformed, is untouched, it's only a matter of time before our lives and our houses and other things that we build, amen, implode. You know, implosion is when something falls from within. So I, by the grace of God, will continue to be, if you will, a soundboard to you. I will continue to be a, man, a trumpet. I will continue to be an alarm to you and to this generation. So I pray that the Lord will continue to adjust my sight. That I will not look at what, you know, pleases men. That I will not look at what men, you know, celebrate. The things that people celebrate are the things that we ought to move away from so we can really finish the intentions of God. God sent them a prophet. And I believe that I've been sent as a prophet to my generation. You know, if you're listening, well, you're listening to the voice of one that is called to be a prophet. So I will speak as a prophetic voice. I will speak as one sent. I will speak as one that is mandated. And I will speak the things that concerns the heart of God. Because whatever concerns God's heart, amen, you should be concerned about it. Amen. So we've been dealing with the issues of uncovering, amen, the Asian part. And what do we mean by that? That there are landmarks. There are patterns. There are standards. There are blueprints. 
amen that god has laid down for us we read the scripture amen when we began this series that god is the one who lays the foundation of the earth he lays the foundation of the earth and of the heavens and to me that is very important because somebody can wake up tomorrow and decide well no i don't want it that way no you don't have you don't have a choice because the one who designed life amen gave us a divine order and a divine blueprint and we can see that that order amen is being eroded the way we look at our life the way we live our life the way we interact the way we understand things people today have their own definition of truth people today have their own understanding of how things should work and how things should be wrong i live my life strictly i'm telling you via the values the principles the standard of the word of God. The word of God is my final habitat and I think it should be for everyone who really wants to live life successfully, who wants to please God, who wants to, amen, yes, fulfill God's intentions for their life. It is the fool that says in his heart there is no God. You know what that means? I will not abide by a values that does not subscribe to how I feel. It is a fool that says in his heart, amen, that there's no God. You know what that means? I will live in the way that I chose. I mean, it's an hypocrite that will tell you, okay, this is what God says, and we say what God says. But in their private life, they live a contrary life. I have tried and I'm trying by the grace of God to live a life, amen, in my private life as I will live it in the public life. I'm believing God to give me, amen, one life. Just as we keep saying that there is no secular life or spiritual life, there is one life. It's all the same with, amen, the things of, of, you know, of our personal life. There's no duality. God's intention is for the spirit, the soul, and the body to be, you know, perfectly united. So we don't say one thing, amen, and mean something else or do something else. That's what Jesus called the Pharisee. He said, these people draw near to me with their lips, with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. It is that issue of the heart that we are concerned about, at least on this platform. Because if we can get it right within the state of our heart, it's only a matter of time that our mouth will agree and every part of our being will surrender, amen, yes, to, to the intentions of God. And that is why Jesus Christ has become to us a pattern. Everything we want to be and we seek to achieve in life should be measured via the values, via the standard of Christ. Not via the standard of a church. Not via what, amen, some group, some, you know, a, a, a committee says. Not because of what, you know, some God knows powerful people say. No, 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 no. Christ is the value, is the standard. And if we can measure our life through, amen, the standard and the principle of Christ, we will uncover the ancient parts. But not only are we going to uncover it, we will walk in it that we may find rest for our soul. So this morning, I'm going to continue on this topic that has become very relevant to our day, to our, t- our time. And I'm going to start by reading the scripture again just to give you context to bring you back amen to the path if you follow what we are talking about and you are well established in it you can function in any way in any place that god amen send you wherever you find yourself you can function there because then you know the values of god then you know the principles of god then you know what is required of you you are supposed to be a light not backing down to darkness, not mimicking a man darkness, not trying to copy darkness. You know what I mean by that? You're being sucked in, amen, by the, by the aggressive value system of the world. That's darkness. Darkness is a value system. Darkness is a belief system. Darkness is the preference of men. Darkness is what people desire above, amen, the will of God. Darkness is when you allow your own appetite, amen, to govern your life, to to define and to determine what you're going to do, rather than, amen, to follow. Listen, if it is that easy 
to follow Christ, the whole world today would have been following him. If you think this, this walk, amen, is an easy thing, oh, by now the whole world would have been saved. Because there is a war, there's a battle. That's why, you know, when we start, you know, uh, 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 um, the broadcast, you will see me, I will, I will play certain, you know, uh, 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 you know, clips. Like this one, I will play these clips. It's for a reason. We are engaging in kingdom warfare. Your life, amen, is a battleground. The enemy is seeking, is seeking to, amen, to control you, to regulate your life, to define you. And if you are not aware, you are not determined. The Lord this morning says something to me. Uh, uh, in, in fact, he has said several things to me. But one of the things he said to me, let me see if I can read it out for you so you can just hear. Listen to this. The things of the Spirit, the things of the Spirit of God are not automatic and they are not automated. Let me read that again. The things of the Spirit of God are not automatic. There is no automatic, you know, gear, you know, and there is no automation. Well, I'm just going to punch X, Y, Z. So every day, all right, things will just continue to carry out. No, no, no. Uh, you know, the way I program it, it doesn't work like that when it comes to the things of God. The things of God are not automatic and they are not automated. They are required, listen, they require a daily input and contribution to keep and to maintain the development since they are relational by design. They are relational. The things of God requires that, amen, you contact, that there's a contact, that there's a speaking, that you come, amen, yes, that you do something, that you move somewhere, amen, yes. There, there is nothing like automatic. Okay, I'm just going to... AI does not work with the things of God. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? I, I hope... Because God designed life to be relational. Amen. By design. God designed life to be relational. Amen. Our communication in life. Amen. Yes. In fact, communication, our life is built on communication and communication is relational. Somebody speak, you listen. How you listen and how, and how you hear should define and determine how you respond. Yes, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. God said, let us make man in our own image is relational god is a relational being that's why he's trion that's why he is three person in one that is who god is god does not amen want you to just punch some you know some code but da, 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 da. Uh -huh. uh, then just be distributing things it doesn't work that's why you cannot depend on your prayer of yesterday to work for you today you can't depend on you know the good things you did yesterday for you to work today no it doesn't work like that yesterday is gone whatever you did yesterday is gone today you have to amen input you have to input to today you have to engage i can't say wow i pray i pray for three hours yesterday so that three hours prayer must take me for three days sorry it doesn't work like that with god it doesn't work like that with god God's things are not automatic. You can't put it on automatic gear. Let me relax. No, you have to be involved. God wants your mind. He wants your body. He wants your soul. He wants, you know, your desire. He wants your passion. He wants every part of you to be involved. The things of the spirit are not automatic and they are not automated. You can't outsource the things of the spirit. <laughs> you cannot outsource your spiritual growth. Prophet, prof, prophesy for me. Prophecy for me. It doesn't work like that. We've misused and abused the ministry of the prophet. And that's why our world is collapsing and, and capsizing. Some say, but he's a prophet. Why is he not giving me a prophetic word? Oh, you'll be a fool. To think that my prophetic ministry is just to give you a prophetic work to just to soothe in you. No, it doesn't work like that. I'm not here to soothe your nerves. I'm here to build you. 
I'm here to make you, hallelujah, what the Father, amen, desired and intended before you were created. That's my mission. That's my assignment. And that's why I don't have 10,000 followers, 100,000 followers. Because I am not doing what the world wants you to do. I'm not, I'm not succumbing to the pressures of the world. You see, it's easy to succumb. Check the scripture. Check the scripture. How many times did you see Jesus give people in a personal prophetic word? How many times did you see Jesus give people personal prophetic word? But he is the chief prophet. Jesus have a conversation with people, but he's having a conversation based on his prophetic spirit. Why would you say this in your heart? Why would you doubt? In conversation, we are interacting with prophetic realities. But you will run to one prophet and go and give God knows what. Because you're looking for somebody to bail you out. God is not in that nonsense. That's where we are where we are today. Because people are not ready to mature. They're not ready to grow. They're not ready to serve God. They think the things of God is just take, you know, the dough, put it in the fire, bring it out, you get a bread. <laughs> I promise God that as long as I live and as long as he gives me breath, I will continue to speak the truth. Nothing but the truth. I will continue. I've always been the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I'm just giving you perspective. So you know where we stand. We live in a day of warfare. And if you don't understand the nature of that warfare, you're already defeated. What are we saying? God will help us to be awakened. Yes. The truth can either draw you closer to God or drive you away from him. The truth can either drive you closer to God or drive you away. The truth does not give you the choice to be in between. The truth does not give you the choice to be lukewarm. The truth can either make you, amen, yes, on fire or put you in a state where you go back to where you're coming from, the world. But you cannot, in this new day, in this end of days, you cannot be lukewarm and think you're going to stay with God. It's sorry. It's not going to work. Let's look at the scripture. What are we doing? We are uncovering principles that will help us to return back to our first love, to heaven's desire, to heaven's intention. We are uncovering principles, values in the word of God that will bring us back to the point and place where our life becomes a, man, a channel, a conduit for the comings of God into the earth again. Haven't you felt, amen, the dryness God wants to come, but God only comes to earth through a people, through a generation. God doesn't just come down because there's a need. He comes down because there's a cry. There's a cry, Maranatha, come Lord. And whatever God is going to do to turn our heart back to him, to turn our face back to, to him, he will do it. For the sake of the redemption of creation. I mean who would believe. That the beloved nation of Israel. The beloved nation of Israel. The chosen one. The one God calls his own. His bride. That God would take them from their land. Yank them from their land. Plunge them into. Into, into, you know, into slavery. Into servitude. Into bondage for 70 years. Oh, may we know the ways of God. May we know the will of God. May we know the natures of God. One of the things 
one of the evil that have been done to amen the, 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 the Christians believers of this generation amen is the issue of selling them one one truth one side of God the church has been sold one side all we know is one side of God so when people like us begin to say but God has the other side let's look at the other side like the other side of the coin you're like no 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 this, what are you describing it's the same God the same God amen who is love whose love will save and, and redeem us in fact whose love redeemed us amen from sin from you know bondage the same God through that same love will judge somebody says if God amen is a just God then he must judge that if he doesn't then there's no justice then there's no justice because justice demands that amen judgment is passed and that's why Jesus died on the cross but the fact that Jesus died on the cross does not mean that well we're free and everything we can just somebody say well I mean Jesus has paid, paid, paid the price Jesus has done it all so I can just live my life you can't be living your life the way you because the way you're living your life is causing somebody else to sin to fall that's why God cannot ignore your wickedness and your iniquity sisters and brothers all those ungodly things we're doing leaving your half body amen for the whole world to see so that your brother can fall all right showing your backside so that your your, your brother can fall all right or you know pretending that you are this person you have this God knows what all right to lure your sister into a trap God is going to judge all these things oh God you don't want to hear a life of hypocrisy God will judge the more I say these things, the more we declare these things, the more I put my own life on the line. Yes, because I cannot afford, amen, to do the opposite of what I'm declaring, what I'm preaching, because I know God will judge me. And I believe, friends, that God is beginning to mop up things. God is raising, amen, yes, craftsmen, is raising, you know, judges, is raising men and women in this season. That are beginning to come with a rod. The Phineas are coming. God is raising the house of Phineas. God is going to judge the ungodliness, the perversion, the wickedness that we are romancing, that we are we, we are worshiping. God will judge our idols because He did it in the past. So, what gives us the idea that He is not going to do it again? We're in the day of Amen, the comings of the Lord. And before God comes, it cleanses, it purifies. And that's why God is speaking like this. We have to put our acts, amen, in order. We have to put our house in order. We cannot afford to live life the way we want it. The spirit of the age says, live the way you want to live your life. Don't bother. Don't think about any person. Just think of yourself. If it doesn't fit you, if it doesn't benefit you, live it. You think you live for yourself? You think you live for yourself? You think because the world says, is your, is your right, do whatever you want. To. You think you've got such a right when it comes to the order of him who creates the heavens and the earth. You don't. He gave you a free will so you can live for him freely. Not so that you can live your own life the way you want to live it. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroad. Remember friends, I remind you again. We are tracking something very important. We want to find the Asian path. Because we've been sold a wrong gospel. We've been sold, amen, a different gospel. We want to find what is the true gospel. What is? What does it mean to follow God? What does it mean to serve God? What does it mean to be a human being? Because it starts from there. What does it mean to be, amen, uh, you know a man what does it mean to be a woman what does it mean to be a leader what does it mean hallelujah yes to be a career person what does it mean amen to be an entrepreneur god has a divine standard a divine blueprint there are people who have been tracking
him, amen, the things of God from ancient past. We saw a man by the name Enoch. He walked with God. That was not a stroll. Enoch was showing a pattern, a divine order, a system of how to walk with God. 365 years, Enoch walked with God. He didn't get tired. I want to learn. I want to know that technology. I want to understand how Enoch did it. Because, you know, in psychology they say something. If it has been done once, it can be done again. If somebody is able to break a record, if somebody is able to do something, something they said is impossible, but somebody was able to do it, then it's possible for somebody else to do it and even do it far better. That's psychology. But that is a kingdom principle. If Enoch can walk with God 365 years on earth and then God took him, I want to find that technology. I want to find that value. I want to understand the kind of heart Enoch had. The kind of determination. The kind of belief system. The kind of lifestyle. The kind of amen, determination we find in Enoch. You know, the Bible never said a lot that Enoch, the Bible never told us that Enoch built, you know, 100,000 seater church. The Bible never told us that Enoch, you know, did X, Y, Z. The Bible never told us Enoch had, you know, such a large family, you know, and he raised, you know, the Bible just said, Enoch walked with God. I mean, that thing is loaded. That statement is loaded. It's filled with volumes that we need to uncover. So when we're talking about Asian part, when we're talking about not removing a man, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the cornerstone, we're dealing with something that is not just a cake. We're dealing with a principle. Remember, principle is timeless. Principle is timeless. If a principle walked 2,000 years ago, that principle will walk today. That principle will walk in the next 1,000 years. If it's a principle, it means it's a law. As long as you are bound within the space and time where that principle is established, it will work. If you take that principle outside of the time and space, then it, it will not work. Just like you can't take principles that work on earth and take it, amen, yes, you know, to, to mass. It's not going to work because there's a different at atmospheric order there. The things of God are principle. That's why they are ruled and regulated by kingdom. The things of God were never designed to be regulated by human definition of church. Because the church, as we know it, is not stable. <laughs> That's why we have all kinds of denomination. That's why we have all kinds of beliefs. And have you noticed that the only way and the only time we can agree as touching anything is when we are confluenced in matters of the kingdom. Without the issues and realities of the kingdom, there will never be an agreement. The church will never have peace. The church will never know peace. The nations will never know peace. Israel will never know peace. No matter what legislation, what you know, somebody tried to do, you understand? Yes, in the UN. No, no, no. Christ is the Prince of Peace. Christ is the one that defines and factor issues of peace. If we don't know Christ, know him in his ascended revelation, we will always fight. I mean, have you seen how we fight over little things? We fight. We, we fight. We fight over doctrine. We fight over belief. We, no, don't talk. To, when you say something that goes against somebody you respect, that person becomes your enemy. When two people get married and they, they are not married in the understanding, the revelation of Christ, they will fight to scatter. Because 
how God designed life, amen, was designed on the principle, on the system of God's kingdom. Have you noticed that everything about life, amen, are interconnected, they are interrelated. You take things out of course, you remove things from where God ordained them, they will die, it's only a matter of time, they won't function. But that's what we are seeing today. That is the agenda, amen, the system of the world, the cosmos is pushing. Let's rearrange the order of God. Amen. In the book of Daniel, the Bible says, yes, the Antichrist will seek to change times and seasons. Before our eyes, divine standards have been altered. Before our very eyes, while we are still playing and joking and doing our own thing, there are people changing the course of time, changing the order of human life, human existence, changing amen, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the DNA and the genotype of man, changing things, you know, bringing, bringing animals and connecting with human and connecting, you know, human genome and connecting it to animal. And now they are connecting animals to, you know, to machines and all kinds of things, you know. <laughs> now we have what they call superhumans, hyperhumans. We come in with all kinds of names, humans, you know, merging with machines. You see the 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 the, the you know the breakthrough of uh, Elon Musk. With that, you know, you know, chip, he was able to, you know, insert into human brain. That all you need to do is just to think, just to think, and that thing becomes a reality. Or well, we may call that a breakthrough. But how far do you push such, you know, you know, technology? That will not interfere with the order, with the standard of God. You see, we've got to know this thing. I'm not against, you know, technology advancement. No. But I'm saying, when these things begin to challenge the values and the principle of God, God is going to come down. Just as he did in the day man began to build something called the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Rebellion. God came down. He said, let's see. Let's see what man is up to. <laughs> He came down and when God comes down he judges there are some comings of God that is for judgment yes there are comings of God that are designed as times of refreshing according to Acts chapter 3 this Jesus shall be withheld in heaven right yes until until the times of refreshing we must pray amen that he comes yes to refresh us but there are there are comings of God that he's coming to judge. He will come and judge. He's coming as a judge. I hope you know that the next time Jesus returns back to earth, he's not coming as a lamb. He's coming as, amen, yes, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's coming with an iron scepter in his hand. He's coming to judge. He's coming to rule the earth. He's preparing us gradually. You see, you see the tonation? You see the way we are speaking these days? Is preparing us in case you have forgotten, in case you don't know, is preparing us for his coming, for his judgment. So that's why they say, put your house in order. Put your house in order. Put your house in order. Clean up your mess. Don't wait until something drastic happens to you before you get a wake up call. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. The wise, when the wise hears amen words of prudence words of wisdom they quickly adjust this is what the lord says stand at the crossroad and look friends this message is a message that is bringing us to the crossroad like many out there like many messages certain messages are not making demand for us to come to the crossroad in fact they're telling us enjoy yourself you've got all the time in the world continue pursue money friends i never said don't you know make money i never said so 
But when you think that is what gives you joy and gives you fulfillment and gives you satisfaction, then you're goofed. Jesus said, when they asked him a question, he said, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. I mean, that, every time I, I think of that scripture, it, 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 it bothers me. It shakes something in me. The same God who says, occupy till I come. Is Jesus speaking with two mouths? No. He just says, he didn't say don't be wealthy. He didn't say don't prosper. He didn't say don't have the good things of life. He just said your life does not consist of those things. Can you be comfortable to have all the wealth of this world and yet walk away from them if you say so? Or is your life defined by things, by people, by ministry? Because I know with Christians, they say, well, well, I don't mind, I don't mind. No, no, but is your life defined by ministry? Ministry, yes. I'm talking about you, minister. Servant of God, woman of God, yes. Is your life defined by that ministry, by that giftings, by the people? You understand? That give you a sense of importance. When they strip you of those people, would you still be able to live life normally and not think something has gone wrong with you? <laughs> and not think you've lost it? Because people has become our fig leaves. Ministry has become our fig leaves. Platform has become our fig leaf. Just like, all right, you know, money and business and, you know, business meeting is the fig leaf for that man out there. Who think his life is all about just making a lot of money. We need a lot of money. We need a lot of money, yes. But the money must be within the context of the desire of, of heaven and the advancement of the kingdom of God. And that is not just a statement. It must be true. This is what the law says. It's telling the nation, the people, the church, stand at the crossroad. Open your eyes. Look. What are you looking at? When you are at the crossroad, what are you looking at? Because the crossroad is the place where we do what? We make decisions. Ask for the what? The Asian past. So now you know where I got, amen, yes, this title from. Ask for the Asian part. What is the Asian part? The part that was laid by the patriarchs, by, amen, the fathers, the fathers of faith. And please let me clarify what I mean by that. Because there are people we call fathers of faith. <laughs> there are not truly really fathers of faith. Popularity does not define or make a man a father of faith. Oftentimes, fathers of faith, you have to find them. You have to go and look for them. They are oftentimes in the wilderness. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. The father of faith is not the one that introduced Mesdis Benz to the church. That's not the father of faith. He's not the one that, be, that built the biggest structure. That's not the father of faith. Don't let no one fool you. The father of faith is one who portrayed the life of Christ, who revealed Christ. The doctors, lawyers, professionals align themselves until their life was no longer defined by their profession, but rather they use their profession to push the agenda of the kingdom. And I can count few of them like that. Now when you meet them, they make you realize that there is more to your life than what you're pursuing. They're not the one all right, that fans your ego. They're not the one that says, well, you see, for people to recognize you and know you, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to... And at the end of the day, you did all those things, but yet you still, you're still not fulfilled. You're looking and asking yourself, is this all to life? My problem with our generation is that we have bought the wrong gospel because we follow the wrong voice.
many people today thought they are building right they are building on the foundation of men who miss god of women who miss god and they think they're on the right path because all right they've got x amount of people in their church and they've got x amount of money in an account somewhere you lie to yourself somebody lied to you that is your own program of 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 you know christianity People have all kinds of mindsets and program. Why? Because somebody programmed your mind. I was also like that until the Lord had mercy on me and collapsed my world and collapsed my idea of Christianity and spirituality. I mean, I was, I was in a state of blindness for, for, for months, almost for years. And God began to restore my sight gradually. Are you willing for God to, to shake you to the core? If you want to go on with God, you have to realize that you've bought... It. Listen, how do you know that you've bought a lie? When, you know, your desire, your, your desire, your, your heart desire is not mirroring your action. That's how you know you've bought a lie. When you... you, you you desire God from the inward heart. Yes, something on the inside of you is crying for God. But what you are portraying <laughs> contradicts your desire. That's how you know you've bought a different gospel. Because they are to be, amen, they, they should not be dwelt in you. They ought to be oneness. What your heart is seeking for is what your, you know, your life should be adding to us. You can't be crying, God, I need you. But the moment you finish praying, you're going to grab something that is worldly, that is carnal. You're going, you're submitting yourself to something that contradicts what you just prayed for. That's how you know you bought the wrong gospel because the, the true gospel deals with the condition of your heart, not of your head. The gospel is not in your brain, it's not in your head, it's in your heart. That's where Christ sits. Is somebody listening? for the Asian part not too many it, 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 will be, it will be hard pressed for you to find in many of our assembly people tracking the Asian part tracking the part that know our work tracking the part amen that in us work tracking the part amen that know our work at least until you know he got drunk by his own handwork by his own planting. You have to track, amen, what it means to live a life for God. No. It cannot be that Christianity and the gospel is just there to serve you. No. It cannot be that our narrative, amen, of Christianity and the church is just, amen, to soothe us. The church cannot just be defined as an hospital or as a bank. The church cannot just be, a, you know, a fire brigade center where we quench every fire. It cannot be that we take advantage of the of the poor state of the environment to impoverish the people by giving them by selling them religion just to keep them in control just to keep them under our control it cannot be all right that you know our idea of 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 christianity now talking talking about those who live in europe that is just about doing good works it's just about charity it's just about giving money no there's more to all of these things that we have come to reduce the things of god to that's why we've got two different gospels. The narrative of the gospel in Africa is totally different from the narrative of the gospel in Europe. And maybe in America. Because amen, environment has come to shape how people look at and define their Christianity. In fact, this morning I was laughing at myself. I was listening to, you know, two artists, you know, a song. One was from Africa. The other one was, you know, from Europe. The one from Europe, you could see, you know, that, the, and I'm not saying, I'm not generalizing this, but the one from Europe, you, you know, you, you, 
his song is more of you know getting to want to know God. You know he wants a life to you know to press into God to seek God, and I'm, you, you could feel the authenticity, <laughs> and I could relate to why I can sing like that. Because he doesn't have the issue of, uh, uh, well, uh, load shedding, you know, maybe. He doesn't have the issue of, um, you know, uh, uh, how, how to move around, transportation. Uh, you know, all of those things are taken care of. He's not struggling with, you know, food and all of that. And the man from Africa is singing. Hey, you would not, you, what's that song again? <laughs> you will not fail your promise for me. <laughs> I think God just wanted me to have a good laugh. And I said to myself, just, just listen to those two people. I mean, these are two people singing to the Lord. One, one song is, you know, you will, not, you will not fail me. You are the unchangeable changer. You must change things for me. Level must change. And the other guy, I mean, this God just drew, drew my attention to that this morning. And he's singing, you could see he's singing from his heart. And I've stopped listening to those kind of songs. You must do it for me. You know, you must make it for me. You must, you know, you know, uh, wipe, wipe my tears away. L listen, we all have problems. I have problems. I cannot allow problems to define my life and to define the gospel that I preach. So that when I get to Europe, amen, I don't have a gospel to preach to the people. <laughs> because I can't go and go now and begin to tell them God is going to do it for you. They'll say, which God? Is it the God of our, you know, political party? Because they've done all those things you're asking. They've done it for us. The narrative of the environment we live in oftentimes define how we look at God, how we see God, and how we, how we even measure our own faith. And that's why we need the gospel of the kingdom because the gospel of the kingdom is the melting point for human redemption. Anyone who claims to be preaching or teaching kingdom and their idea of kingdom is narrowed down to, you know, God will do it for you. Or we want to take the nation, but you know the reason why you want to take the nation is so that you can have a financial muscle to be able to do X, Y, Z. Because or right, we've got a church in Canada, we've got one in Europe, we've got one in, in, in China, we've got one in you know the reason why you're doing you know that you're not doing that to propagate the gospel of, of Christ. You're doing that, amen. Yes, to have financial security. That's what people call evangelism today. That's what people call missions today. Is unfortunate and is a and, and is a big shame on us, particularly those who claim they're doing kingdom. You know, I was having a chat with a wonderful brother, a senior, almost like a father to me yesterday. Somehow he I've been trying to get him for a long time. Yesterday he finally decided to call me. So we're having a chat. And he was telling me because they have a ministry you know basically all over the world and he is more like the face of the mission they have ministry all over i mean under paul ginaldo if you know paul ginaldo new covenant church i'm not sure i'm sure he's not watching me this morning because he also connects to us too so he was just chatting and he said you know they were doing a walk in chad you know chad he said and uh, and you know they were Kids, churches, you know, people, you know, under the tree. He said he took a picture of that, and I'm sure he won't mind me share this. <laughs> he said he took a picture of that, but he never really, you know, put effort and considered that this is really a work, this is really a ministry. He never wrote, you know, a report because he was to write, write a report and send it to Paul Ginaldo. Of course, he was writing a report of all their mission work, you know, US, Canada, all these places, and like, yeah, you know, yeah, we're doing something. <laughs> I love the way he said it. He said when he took, you know, the report to Paul Ginaldi. In fact, he just took a picture of that one and sent it. And, you know, you know Paul Ginaldi was looking at, you know, the report and said, but so what's the, where's the report of this, this picture? I said, please, I just don't mind that one. I said, no, I, I want the report of this one. The one he never thought that he never gave, you know, attention to. Why? Because, I mean, they're just basically meeting under a tree. Close to 100 children plus. 
There's poverty there. No, we don't talk about that. There's poverty there. Uh -uh. The man of God says, I want a report on this one. He said the man of God gave him a good one, gave him a good lashes. And I can understand we had a good laugh. Because that's the mindset many of us have. No, we will focus on the mission, on the mission to America, on the mission to Canada, on the mission to Europe. Because, you know, yeah, it's hard currency. Yeah, that's where the money comes from. But God does not look at things that way. God doesn't see things that way. That's not how the things of God, you understand, are done. The one you discard is the one God is interested in. How many people truly are really doing mission work? Mission work. You really, you know you're there to sacrifice. You know you're there to give out your heart to the work of God. No. When you say you're doing mission in America, you know what you're doing. And that's why those ones too, they take advantage of you. How many people have contacted me? They want, you know, partner with me. We do, I say, look, no, I'm not going to do I'm not going to do that because I know your agenda. I already know where you're going. I'm not going to accept. Not like I don't want to. Not like I don't need to. Not like I don't need the money. I need money. I need resource. But I'm not going to compromise. Because we are raising a standard. We are raising a bar. Amen. We are setting a precedent. We are returning the ark of God back. It will not be said that in my day, in my time, that they will not find ten in the land. So that they can spare the land. God said to Abraham, if I can find 10 for 10's sake, let's become part of that remnant. Those are the people I'm speaking to. Those are the people I'm sounding this alarm to. I'm not sounding this alarm to everybody because I know people are fast asleep and they don't even hear. In fact, they will stone you when they start hearing these things. And we have not even gone to the deep core of the message. We are still on the surface. This is just a clarion call. This is just a wake up call. No, they don't want to hear. Ask for the Asian parts. Where is the good way? Then walk in it. Did you see? It doesn't stop in you knowing the good way. It doesn't stop in you understanding or even writing about it. Many people will write about, you know, the good way. We've written, we've written books. <clears throat> you would think the way we have written those material that we've actually worked in it. No, no, no. We only took advantage of the truth. We peddled the truth. You know what I said? We peddled the truth. We peddled the gift. We are sellers of the things of God. Any truth we find... That becomes that can trend ah commas. <laughs> That's commas. That is how wicked many of us have become in the church. See what they did with the message of reformation. They commercialized it. Every time God says he wants to do something and it begins to stir the heart of people. See what they are doing today, Marabalabo, with the ministry of prayer. See how they are commercializing prayer. See what they have done to the ministry of intercession. Somebody told me, ah, I'm in America. I met Cindy Jacob. And then, I know that your heart is not right. I know why you're meeting such people, amen, is to build a platform for yourself. Can you imagine a ministry so sacred as intercession? We pervert it. Even in America, many of those people call themselves intercessors. They have perverted the ministry. All they do is to write books, to make money out of something that is supposed to be sacred, something that ought to, you know, put you in a state where you go and bury yourself. Nobody even wants to see you. I tell you, if, I, if I'm in America today, I don't even need to begin to think of money because they will, be, they will be the one looking for me. Just give us that message. Give us a right. They would have written, like the message I'm preaching right now, they would have written three books out of it. Money will be coming to you. Money will be going to them. 
don't we know all these things i didn't begin ministry yesterday this is my 33 years journeying with god moving out of darkness into light and then somebody would think you just started yesterday because basically you have nothing to show for it physically <laughs> i told you my landlord said to me are you going to get yourself a car as maybe i don't know <laughs> don't know <laughs> I mean it's funny to me are you going to get yourself a car we live in two different realms two different worlds may the Lord help us to understand that we need to move away from merchandising the things of God they're sacred I was sharing a message a few days ago on TikTok. And I like to be among those youth people. I, I, my heart is just drawn to them now. And I thank God that they are following, they are listening. I'm sharing with them about, you know, David saying it's time we bring back the ark of God. We bring back the presence of God. We can't have a nation without the presence of God. The Bible says in the days of Saul, they never consulted the presence of God. They never consulted the ark. So David con he confined it. He may call his men, you know, say, guys, can we bring back the ark of God? Call the people of the land. Can we bring? They say, yes, it's a good thing. What a noble thing. But it was done out of order. Until that good gesture, that noble thing took the life of a priest. took the life of Uza because he had forgotten why won't he forget because for 22 years the issues of the ark the presence of God and the priesthood <laughs> had been put you know, in a cupboard locked away God do your own thing there the people were doing their own thing they had forgotten the pattern the ways of God they had forgotten the standard of God that God if you say you want to serve God you can't just do it at a leisure time you can't do it the way you want to do it there is a pattern Hand, there's an order there is a place we must come to to worship God in spirit and in truth back in the Old Testament there's a mountain they must go to worship him when Jesus Christ came he said that mountain has not shift but now is in your heart the true worshiper must worship God in spirit and in truth Woman, you don't need to go to an, an, a, a mountain to worship God. No, he has come down. The mountain has come down, but now he's in you. So the same principle and order that amen, you engage in going to the hill of the Lord to worship him is the same order and principle you've got to engage, hallelujah, in approaching him even within your heart. You cannot just, you know, approach the things of God with levity. You don't care, you know. God is not that difficult. I mean, God, God, God is not that, you know, difficult. Hey, God is not your bellboy. You can't treat him the way you treat your gardener. He's not your gardener. He's not your driver. He's not your servant. I'm afraid this generation needs, needs to learn, do, do not know about God who is sovereign and needs to learn about the sovereignty of God before God starts killing people. And that's your job and mine to tell the people that there is an order. There is an order. I want to show you some order this morning. There is an order when it comes to worshiping God. Remember, worshiping God is not just an act of lifting our hands. That's part of it. Worshipping God is a life first off at, unto him. We must offer ourselves. When you offer yourself, don't you think your money is included? Don't you think your children is included? Don't you think your husband, your wife is included if you're married? Don't you think that career, that job is included? Don't you think your car is included? Don't you think your dressing is included? Your shoe is included? 
You can't worship God and then you leave certain things behind. That's what they said. They said, no, we're going to worship our God. Uh, Pharaoh said, okay, leave this thing. He said, no, 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 no. No, everything we have must go and worship God with us. <laughs> Not, even our chicken must go. <laughs> Hello? In the call to worship, you don't leave certain things behind. Everything must be involved. Your, the breath, how you breathe. Somebody following me? Your dressing must glorify God. You can't worship God and then half of your breast is showing. Which God are you representing? Your buttocks is showing. You say you're worshipping God. You're worshipping God but you're making people around you feel uncomfortable because of your dressing. Which God are you worshipping? You must be worshipping Baal. I say you must be worshipping Baal not the true God because whatever you do must be done in consideration of those around you let your light so shine that men may see and give glory to God we can't have a double standard God does not have a double standard well, this is who I am. Sorry, that's who you think you are. When you say you've given your life to Jesus, remember, I'm talking to Christians. I'm talking to believers. And if you are not a believer yet, then what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Because your future depends on your redemption and salvation. If you are not redeemed and you're listening, you're not saved, you're listening to me, you're playing with death, I'm not threatening you. Because, listen, you are vulnerable to the enemy. He can take you off anytime. Christ is our security. Don't think you have all the time in this world to play around, to do your own thing. There or oh, some is, uh, you know, later. Oh. No, no. You have to do it while it is day. They say, call upon the Lord while it is day. The night is coming when you don't have the opportunity again. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm showing you principles, patterns. I'm calling you back to the ancient part. The ancient part is not the ancestral part. No. It's the part, amen, that Christ, who is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, laid down for us. Because I know most time, if you are preaching from this part of the world, when you say Asian part, when you say, you know, Asian, minds go back to ancestors. No. Ancestors are people, they are dead. But there's a God who was before time began and who set the standard and order of how life should be lived. And men, as the Akan, began to follow that path. And their path has become to us a track, a blueprint, a standard that we ought to follow. We don't worship Moses, neither do we worship Elijah. We don't worship Elisha, El, 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 you know, Elisha neither do we worship Enoch. We don't worship Esther, neither do we worship Ruth. But in those people, there are values and principles. Amen. Kingdom values, righteous patterns that they laid for us. You can study Esther and know how to, how to rule a nation. You can study Moses and learn, hallelujah, how to bring a nation out of servitude, out of bondage. I would have assumed that is what church should be teaching. Amen. Politicians. Mas Moreau tried to do a bit of that. He used, you know, biblical principle to teach people, amen, yes, uh, you know, a statement about, you know, leadership. By the way, Mary, as I shared yesterday on TikTok, she was a young woman. Like any contemporary ladies following us, joining us, you know, tracking with us. She was a young person. She had a life before her. She was like any other young lady out there. I mean, 
she, she, she was cutting Joseph when they were laid and said, <laughs> Blessed are you above women. She was young. When heaven, hallelujah, lay hold of her and say, You are going to be amen, a pathway of birthing the redemption of creation. Wow. No, 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 no. You want to make all the manifest. And I will serve God when I finish, you know, making my millions. Don't you think that Amen Mary had prospect, had you know vision, had you know things she wants to do? But when her life got interrupted by God, that became a vision. Like I like I would define that some of us we don't get to know our vision, Amen. When we you know when we come to this world, say, so, well, I know my vision because uh, uh, my my parent told me. No, some of us, Amen, collide with our vision at the latter part of our life, e.g. So, so thought he was a righteous man, was doing something right. No, they told him they on the road to Damascus, they revealed his, his, his life to him. This is the reason. So, don't tell me that uh, uh, the day I, I got born again, I knew my vision. No, you don't. You know Christ, and as you walk with Christ, as you grow in Him, He will reveal. That's why I keep saying to you, and I'll say it again. Don't seek vision first. Seek Christ first. When you know Christ, he will reveal the essence and the purpose of your existence to you. It's not the other way around. Oh, friends, we're still on just one scripture. Stand at the crossroad. Look. Ask. Did you see that word? The Lord just reminded me now. Ask. It means you may not be able to discover it by yourself. You need to ask. There are those who've gone ahead of you. There are those whose life has become a man. Uh, what do you call it? A signboard. Signboard. Signpost. Mm -hmm. Signpost. That is what my life has become to many who are following us. I'm a signpost. I'm a signboard. That's why I cannot afford to lead people astray. Because your life, amen, is pointing people to something. My life is pointing people to somewhere. The commissars of this world, the teeners of this world, the priscillas of this world following me. My life is pointing you to somewhere. We may, we may all amen, inherit a dysfunctional life, but our life is not going to end up dysfunctional because we are heading towards a place in Christ. Hallelujah. That we are passing through, amen, the crisis of life and we are coming to the place where Christ is glorified. That is the end story. That's the end story. So I cannot afford to mess up. They say, ask. You can't go and ask somebody, amen, who is not aware, who, is, who, who doesn't know, who, who is confused. They say, ask, ask. So there are people we need to ask. Stop listening to people who, who have no understanding, who have no clue about life, about the things of God, who have no track of the Asian path. Kandere Yadabaha. What are you doing in the house of them that you know better than? The blind, amen, will lead the blind, both will fall into the ditch. That's what the Bible says. In the land, amen, yes, of, of one-eyed person, that is the king. When you find, amen, that in a whole, in a whole land, in a whole order, there's just one person with one eye. Don't you think they will honor him there when everybody is blind there? That's what we see with many churches. Pastors that will be screaming night and day. Just be screaming and be, and be spitting at you. And be pulling your head here, pulling your head and kick you there, kick you there. And you think the anointing is there. Ooh, what an anointing. You're a fool. That's not an anointing. You've got to find men who can point you. <laughs> men that can point you. Women that can point you. Some of you have been pointed to the, you know, to the wrong thing by the wrong people. Meanwhile, you thought that they were right. That's why there is nothing like, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, mammonic spirit in my life because I know that can influence me. 
to lead people astray. I've given people counsel. Who, 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 who used to be financial? Who used to bless me financially? All right, and I know the counsel I'm giving to them will lead them in the right path. I didn't say to them, no, no, don't, don't, do, don't leave your job. Keep your job so that the money can always come to me. No, do what is right. Because I know they are not the one blessing me. Where, where do you have such counsel? Follow your heart. Do what is right. No. You say, ah, that's you losing X amount every month. What's going on? Are you crazy? No. Because you want to stand holy. You want to stand righteous and justify before the Father. God will test the works of our hand. Ask for the Asian part. Don't ask for a contemporary part. <laughs> Don't ask for the part that will suit you now. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> there are people who are so who are so involved in what is happening now or what is going to happen in the future, but they have no track of the journeys of the spirit, the journeys of Christ. The Bible said these are the journeys of the children of Israel. This thing we're doing has history, rich history, ancient history. History connected, hallelujah, to the eternal God. Whenever God reveals himself, how does he reveal himself? I am the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. I'm the God of Jacob. That should make you scream now. Whenever God reveals himself, he reveals himself through certain names, through certain people. Why? Because those people, amen, are landmarks. Abraham is a landmark. Jacob, earlier, that became Israel, was a landmark. Of course, which re reflect many of us. Many of us were Jacob before we became Israel. Isaac, I'm the God of Jacob. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's how he introduces himself. Why? Because there was something he sowed. There was something implanted in Abraham that opened generation to eternal truth. Without faith, no one can please God. Abraham showed us what it means to live a life of faith. And that life was transmitted to the next generation, Jacob, uh, uh, Isaac, and was transmitted, amen, to the third order that became the nation. And through, amen, Jacob, Israel, the nations of the world, I have a blueprint of how to reach God. Ooh. That's why you always I am the God of Abraham Isaac And Jacob But before that There have been men who have been tracking God Before Abraham Abraham if you will was the Let me, let me put it this way Abraham was the, the, the man that God Used a man to to officialize, if there's a word like that, to officialize, amen, how to connect with God. Abraham laid, amen, a foundation, and that foundation, amen, was connected to a man called Enoch because Enoch walked with God. So Abraham did not just wake up one morning and decide, oh, wow, let me walk with God. No, Abraham, amen, connected, he reached deep into the bowels, amen, of spiritual heritage. Found in Enoch, in Noah. Are you getting this? Because that's how the things, the, the things of the spirit, amen, are generational. You you that's why they speak to us about genealogy. Have you read the genealogy of Jesus? You will see that it began from Adam, right? Go read the genealogy of Jesus. 
because we are dealing with a man, a God man. He will refer to himself as the son of man, yet he is the son of God. Nobody jumped down from heaven to, to you know to bat this thing. No, there's a seed we all began from. That's why they refer to the things of God as first as a seed. It must grow. When you can't trace, amen, the, 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 the place that, the, where a man began from. One of the things where many of us were able to identify that this man, the core prophet, is false by the name T.B. Joshua. Nobody could trace his, his spiritual root, amen, to anything that is authentic in God. In fact, when they trace his root, they trace his root, amen, to water, to water spirit. Some traced his root, amen, to Islam. He was a Muslim. And there was no trace of how he got born again, where he got born again from. And people were still saying, no, he said, no, that man is a prophet. You're a fool. You're blind. You're one of them that the Bible says, amen. If the days are not cut short, you'll be deceived. You'll go to hell. You think, you, you think what I'm saying, you, you think it moves me if you get angry. It doesn't move me. That's why I'm a prophet. That is why I'm called to speak. We, we tread, we speak, we enter realms that people are afraid to enter. I've been saying this thing while he was alive. So I'm not saying it, you know, that, oh, the guy's dead. No, I've been saying it while he was alive. So all of the issues that, you know, uh, BBC is bringing out... It makes nothing to us. It means nothing to us. It just confirms it. But that does not mean that we approve BBC because they have their own agenda while they are revealing, you know, TB Joshua just to malign the church. We know that. We know that. If you don't have a root connected to Christ, when you see people operating from a false spirit, you will not be able to identify it. If you cannot trace your root to the right foundation, the Bible says the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. That foundation are not just personality. They are the revelation, the, the grace, the spirit that those personality brought out to establish the counsels of God. The church was not built on man. It's never built on man. The church is not built, amen, on Peter. The church was built on the revelation, hallelujah, that Peter proclaimed, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Jesus said. But my father, and on this Petra, on this rock, on this unshakable, unmovable rock, I will build my church. Have you seen? Generations have come and gone. Try to move the church. Try to destroy the church. We're still standing. Because the church, they thought the church was the building. So they burned the building. And they, they thought the church, amen. Uh, when they kill people, you know, the church will end. As, as they were killing people, the spirit of the church was jumping from one generation to another, from one human being to another. <laughs> you think if you kill me or you stop giving or you do everything to you know, hinder me, the work will stop. It will not stop. Because the church is spirit. The church of the Lord cannot be destroyed, cannot be killed. You can't limit it. The church of the Lord does not need, amen, a four-wheel drive to move. <laughs> we are here, we are shifting things, hallelujah, in nations. We are shifting things over around. That's the mandate of the church. If you don't know, you need to know. So when we say, please give, and you say you're not going to give, the church of God, God will raise other people to give. Because the church of God cannot be shut down. The church of the Lord cannot lack. God is the one resourcing and sourcing his church. We just need to learn to wait for his time. Is somebody listening? 
What are we saying? They say, ask for the Asian part. Who are you asking? Who are you asking? What are you asking? Ask for the Asian part. Where the good way? Where they say, ask for the Asian part. Where is the good way? Then walk in it. It's gonna take some determination. It's gonna take a man. You making up your mind. It's gonna take a man. You making decisions to want to walk in it. Not everybody who have come in contact with the truth loves the truth and are willing to walk with the truth I know a lot of men of God a lot of apostles that I've met who know the truth who love the truth but because of their belly because of the fame because of you know what they are getting from the world system because of their salary in fact they refuse to go all the way Then why are you following God? What testimony are you going to give to the world? If you're living like the world people. I told you some, I used to know this friend of mine in Nigeria back in the day. He believes he's got the call of God upon his life. <laughs> he used to work in a bank. Echo Bank, if I, I still remember. He used to work in a bank called Echo Bank. Echo Bank is a big bank today. In fact, it's becoming an international bank. And he was doing fine. And he came from, you know, pretty, you know, wealthy family. We believe God has called him to ministry. So every month, he will buy drum. He will buy keyboard. He will buy, you know, this. He will buy that. He will buy the best of the best. So one day I called him and said, you know what? You're, you're fooling yourself. If you want, if you think God is calling you, you cannot try to put all this thing together and think that is how you're going to do the work of God. In fact, the day God is going to say, start the work, he might first ask you to resign your job. No money. God doesn't work. You, you, you see, you, can't, you cannot be wise, you know, human wisdom to try to do the things of God. Say, ah, let me buy, let me buy this, let me buy that, let me buy that. <laughs> I remember when I started ministry, I went to, you know, my, I will call him my spiritual father because I grew up under him. Of course, I mean, I grew up under that charismatic, you know, movement. Later I realized that uh, uh, this is not leading me anywhere. But anyhow, you know, the person that was my, almost like my spiritual father then, because in fact I served him. That's how I grew to know the Lord. So I went to him and said, sir, I'm starting ministry. He said, that's fine. And I was ex expecting him to say, oh, wow. Let me sow, you know, some money into you. So buy, you know, some things that you're going to need. And then he didn't say anything. So I said, ah, but we need some chairs and all of that. He said, no, no, no. It doesn't work like that. He said, you go build the people. The people will build the chairs. The people will buy the chairs. I know that he said that, you know, sarcastically. Not like he meant it. Because I know that. But I took that. He said, truly. If I, if I can find people. If they believe in the vision, they will buy the chairs. So we started in the school. People were sitting on, you know, this small, you know, a, a desk, you know, chairs. And later on, the Lord start adding to us. We start buying plastic chairs. You cannot think ahead and think you want to play safe with the things of God. No, it's not going to work. When you want to walk with God, sometimes you have to learn to jump. Following God, you have to learn to follow him blindly. Faith is blind. Oh, I know what's going on in your brain now. <laughs> you cannot calculate. That's why places like this, like South Africa and some you know, Western country, people can grow in faith, you know, because their salary defines their measure of faith. You can't work with God if you have to calculate, calculate, okay? The bond must go first. The car must go first. That must go. That, 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 that. The 
after everything goes there, you think of, okay, maybe you're tight, what you want to give to God and all of that and all of that. That's why you cannot do great things when it comes to the things of God. Because your faith is already benchmarked by the system of Babylon. And that's why you find that people from different, from other parts of the world, like Nigeria, you see, the people, they do things crazy, like what, what in the world, yeah? Because they didn't have this financial system to benchmark them. So they go all out. Yes, it works for good and it also works for the worse. But my point here is, if you think you're going to try to reason out the things of God, you're going to play safe, you know, get the keyboard first, before we start the church, get this, get the hall, start the church from your house. Didn't the church begin in the house? Maybe God is speaking to somebody. You'll be naughty. God says, start a work for me. I know. We've got to, because everybody, it, it, it has to have a nice hall. Who told you that church is the hall? Who told you that church must begin in a hall? Church, as we know it from the scripture, began in the house, continue in the house. If you read the Bible, they'll say the church in the house of, the church in the house of Caesar. <laughs> the church in the house of Cleo. <laughs> Who told you that the influence and the and the authority of your calling is is dependent on the structure on the you know, on the building? Who told you that? When you're not faithful in little, God will never commit great things into your hand. Many of you know how I began in my my broadcast. I mean. I've pastored a church. People, some people following me don't know. I pastored a church for 28 years, you know, you know, 23 years. We came to South Africa. We started fellowship in Johannesburg. We came to uh, Cape uh, uh, Franju. We started a fellowship. Yes, it closed up, but we started. I was doing something. I was about starting something. And God said, no, I told you, take the airwave. You will take the land. That's what led me to do what I'm doing. Now I'm sensing God may be saying something new again okay i'm listening i want to understand so that the moment i get clarity we start if you say start the church like i said who am i to say no but i'm not going to start the church looking for big hall so that you know the financial pressure of that thing is the one pushing you no 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 we don't start the things of god we don't do the things of god under financial pressure no the work of god is like growing a child you can't be growing a child and you're already thinking of, hey, how are we going to pay the university? The, you know, the, 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 the you know, the, 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 the child is still in kindergarten. You're already thinking of, how, how are we going to get money for his, his university? Come on. That's how many people think in the body of Christ. And that's why we don't get to grow and do great things for God because we despise is the days of little beginning you know what because what defines what we do is the environment everything around you is big 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 house you know uh, uh, big mall you know big this that's why people are in debts people want to go and shop amen in some little shop somewhere no they must go to Woolworths they must go to XYZ they must go. come on you, you fooling wake up Start small, but don't, don't end small. That's what I'm saying. And that word, don't end small, you know, it's subjective. <laughs> it's subjective. Hallelujah. Okay, Isaiah, so you need to begin a roundup. Just one scripture we've done this morning. I hope somebody is getting blessed because that's the purpose. I want you to be blessed. I want you to understand that the things of God begins with a seed. It doesn't end in the seed. Find where the good way is. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk into that thing. Walk into. Many of us are yet to walk into the apostolic order. We read about it. We know about it. We even re reference people in the apostolic, in the reformation. And we call it kingdom. No. Have you started to walk in it? Walk in it. Walk in it. 
is reality. When you start walking, ha, ah, you will experience things. I put a message out yesterday, and uh, God says, seek my face. And I said, the question is, how long does it take to seek the face of God? If you don't think, if you're not thinking, you'll be quick to jump to want to answer a question. And that just shows our immaturity and our laziness to think about the things of God. I don't just post things because I need to post things. When I post, it, mo post things, most of the time I'm asking a question. Sometimes I'm steering something for you to think about. So don't be quick to think you know, you understand. Because we all know in parts. It takes a man who has learned to seek the face of God to walk with God. You can't walk with God if you have not learned to seek the face of God. And to seek a face, to seek God's face is not something that just happened just because you, you know you've got this zeal. Ah, 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 ah. Because you're going to realize, amen, tomorrow something else will happen to you that will shake your faith to the core. And you're no longer seeking the face of God. Like we said yesterday, the Bible says, Jesus said in, 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 in the book of Luke 18, men, and he taught them this parable, men always, men always need, need to pray, need. So what is the need of our prayer? Why do we pray? Because we have a need. What is the context of your need that drives you to prayer? Is your need motivated, amen, by material, financial, emotional needs? Because Jesus wasn't talking about, amen, your own financial need. Or else he would not have said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing will be added. So why would he want you to be, amen, pursuing the things that he said is going to be adding? Why will the addition be what, we, be, be what you are seeking for? There must be something else that he wants us to be seeking for. There must be something that he defines as a need. That even when we think we are fainting, we must not faint. We must continue to seek. You see, that's how I think. That's how, amen, I've been taught to think. When it comes to the things of God, you have to be spiritually intelligent. If you don't know how to ask the right question when it comes to the things of God, like we just read, ask for the Asian power. If you don't know how to ask and you just, you know, you know, presumptively, as assumingly respond to the things of God, You'll be seen as a fool, according to the books of book of Proverbs. What a day we're living! As for the Asian parts, have you have you noticed that that word parts, amen, is plural? It's not singular. <laughs> Because there's a part of Enoch, there's a part in Abraham, there's a part in Joshua, there's a part, amen, in Elizabeth, there's a part in, 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 in Mary, there's a part that, you know, Abigail showed us, there is a part we found, hallelujah, yes, in Ruth, there's a part we found in David, Asian parts, there are parts. All those parts leading to one part, Christ. But there are parts. Paul showed us a part. Peter showed us a part. Come on. In fact, amen. Judah showed us a part. So when you see the part, you don't work in it. <laughs> that you can be so close to Jesus. And still be compromised. That's the part Judah showed us. Come on, friends. <laughs> what a what a good place. Amen. What a way to end. Judah showed us that we can have proximity with Christ, yet your heart is not aligned to truth. You can be so close to Christ, yet there is an opening that the enemy can 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 find and can try to. Compromise the things of God. That's Judas for you. How many of us, how many people today are reflecting the order of, of Judas? When you hear them, you think, wow. Because they have proximity. 
they are close close to the things of God close to God they sing the right song preach the right message you hear kingdom but when you check their heart you see Judas you see you see their spirit is written Judas they are only looking for opportunity to sell the master to sell the things of the kingdom why that's a dangerous place to be huh? even when Christ sat with Judas they ate together and the Lord was still speaking in parable ah, Judas friends we need to be careful. Even when the Lord was saying, do you know what Jesus said? Friend, do you betray your master? Friend, he called him friend. Jesus called Judah friend. He still did not change his mind. God help me. Judas did, still did not bow and say, hey master, I'm sorry, I've made a mistake. Help me, help me, help me. Help me. I've compromised. He was a disciple, but he was not a disciple. Judas. Now, that scares me. That scares me. It scares me of my heart. And that's why every day, you see why I said earlier that the things of God are not automatic and they're not automated. You have to be pursuing him. My heart chase. My heart chase after you. When I wake up in the night, God, my mind, soul, and body are bind to you. Because sometimes, you know, the wind and the wave of your past can bring certain thoughts. And you know those thoughts are only going to steer, you know, resentment, anger, hatred. So what do you do? Immediately, you come under the water. You wash. You immediately bind yourself to the Lord. You don't give it a room. That's why these things are not automated. There's no automatic machine in you that cleanses you, that makes you know. You have to present yourself to Him. My mind, my soul, my body, Lord, I bind to you. I surrender to you. I receive the mind of Christ. That thought is not mine. Jesus, thank you for your blood that washes me, that cleanses me. In fact, sometimes I'm doing it, you won't even know what I'm doing. Because I, I've not gotten to the point and place where I can trust myself. No, I trust him. I trust him. Judas, you would have assumed I mean, in the midst of the Lord's Supper, they were having supper. He, will have, <laughs> he went out to go and carry out. That tells you something about your heart, about the condition of the fallen human being. That tells you how desperately wicked. Don't lie to yourself, don't fool yourself. Me, never. Remember, uh, Peter, I never. If everybody is disowned you, if everybody, I'm not me. <laughs> Peter is like so many people that I've met. They are so confident of themselves. Ah, no, no, me. Ah, no. My confidence is in the Lord. Jesus said, Today you would deny me three times. Three times. Do you think Peter was actually lying? Do you think Peter, when he said to me, I will never do, do you think he was lying? Do you think he was trying to impress the Lord? No. He meant what he said, but he didn't know himself. He meant what he said, but he did not know himself. You don't know yourself until you meet the Lord. You don't know what you are capable of until the light of God begins to shine upon you. <laughs> 
You don't know what you are capable of doing until you are pushed to certain condition and position. Some of us, it is poverty that will trigger and bring out that other side of us. Some, some of us, it is wealth. Wealth. Some of us, it, it will be influence. Power. Many people, many politicians did not begin, you know, with the mindset to go and steal and rob people and, and, and steal, you know, public money. No. They had a desire to want to serve, to want to serve the people. <laughs> but when they came among the big boys, they say, you see that car, you see that house is yours. All you need to do is just, just sign. That's all. We take care of the rest. But this thing is wrong. Who told you is wrong? This is how things are done. We know it. So what's your problem? Just they won't even know. The signing is just a formality. Because in your heart you have not made up your mind. You've been thinking, maybe this is an opportunity for me. So that I can also send my children to good school. I can also help my community. <laughs> Then you, the devil will be giving you, you know, yes, a reason why you should take it because it's going to, after it's going to help humanity. You will take it. And you compromise. Then that becomes a hook. So tomorrow when you say, I'm not going to they say, ah, then we're going to report what you've done. You did it. Yeah? You're, you're captured. In my place, they say, what you're not going to eat, don't smell it. Friends, may God give us understanding, may he give us grace to learn to submit. What are you going to live for? What are you living for? Are you living for Christ? If you're living for Christ, you're living for the truth. If you're living for the truth, know that you're going to have enemies. People are going to hate you. People are going to reject you. Because no one seeks to follow the truth that will not have enemy. Because the truth is no longer an acceptable standard for society. In fact, for most people today in the church, you're going to be hated. And nobody wants to be hated. Nobody wants to be disliked. It's the nature of man for us to seek and to gravitate towards those who love us, who seek the best of us, who appreciate us, who speak well of us. So you know, you know what prophets are faced with. Nobody speak well of true prophets. All these guys you see on television and, and uh, <laughs> YouTube, on Facebook. Don't let nobody fool you. If you're a prophet, the Bible says you will be hated by men. In fact, your own family will hate you. You know what? Because the values you subscribe to is totally different from the values that the society embraces, that the religious system, the religious order embraces. What's your problem? They will tell you, what's your problem? But heaven will celebrate you. Father, we honor you. I hope this morning that the things we've said has fallen on good ground, good hearts. Because that's my desire. 
He said, if I can find 10 in the land, you say for 10 sake, in an entire city of two, they could not find 10. Abraham was pleading and interceding. For five sake, I will not destroy. Ah. Friends, let's become the voice of the remnant proclaiming and declaring where the path meets the values of Christ and his kingdom. Let's make up our mind to live for this truth and if need be to die for it. Somebody must die for something. You like it or not? Every human living today will die. But when you die, you will die for something. You like, you know it or not, you're going to die for something. What are you going to die for? Whatever you're going to die for must be what you're living for today. Nobody can shy away or run away from death. Oh, when we say death, oh, every, no, 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 no. Everyone listening to me right now, you've had somebody that you know in the past maybe six months or three months that have died. So why are you afraid of death? So why are you afraid to talk about death as if death is a mystery? No. Every day we live among the dead. Yet, We've been given life. So while we have this life, let's live it. You know, recently it began to dawn on me. Even though I've always known, I'm not, I'm, I'm not one who is afraid of death. But it began to dawn on me of recent that I want to live for Christ. I mean, I'm already living for Christ. But you know what I mean? I really want to live for Christ. So that when people see me, they will see a man that is dead in Christ. And that motivates my decision. That motivates my decision. Nothing else. Nothing else. Many of you have heard, maybe you've heard, you've heard that, you know, I'm, I'm, faced, I'm facing a divorce. I'm divorce, yes. I can't hide it. I can't lie to people. I can't pretend about it. It's the reality. But what is the cause? Because somebody chooses a different path that is not the kingdom path, that is not the godly path. Beyond every other thing that happened that cost me pain for 13 years. But I have to make a choice. You rather stay or you choose the path of Christ. I choose the path of Christ. Because somebody that is not willing to pray with you for 13 years is not willing to follow the path of Christ with you. There's no willing for you to lead. It's as good as dead. Did God allow it? I'm sure he did for a reason known to him. But we rejoice. That's the point. I want to die fulfilled. I want to die happy. Those who've gone ahead of me, they died for this truth that I have access to. So, why can't I live my life as if is the last breath that I have to, pre- to proclaim the, the gospel of the kingdom? I have nothing to hide. I have nothing, you know, to, to, to be angry or to be sorrowful for or to regret. Oh, there are things that... Are, I wish did not happen, but I have no regret. I have no regret. You know what? I see Christ in me, behind me, above me, beneath me. Everywhere I go, I see Christ. I've always had this testimony. There's a guy who came from Nigeria. He's a different one. I'm still bearing that testimony. Nobody can claim or can say Isaiah did this. He took our money. He did. No, 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 no. It's all good. 
and it must always be good. Because I'm not doing what I'm doing because I want to prove a point because of where I come from. Just to, oh yeah, there was a time I was trying to prove that not everybody that comes from Nigeria is a drug pusher. Because sometimes you have to do that because the moment you mention your Nigeria or they see the green passport, ah, it's like you're carrying shit. It's like, you know, you, you've committed a crime. I was willing to be an ambassador of Christ. Both for my nation for the kingdom and that's why I have decided to stay away from anything that can stay, they say stay away from every appearance of evil I told you when I was coming to Johannesburg <laughs> at the power station I had so much of a luggage of course my books <laughs> I said to the guy I said don't Intercape have you know an incentment. I mean, can't you guys just reduce the price? The guy said, Yes, we can do that, but you have to tell you know them that you you have to come into agreement with the driver that you enter in Vushta, then we reduce the price. I said, I don't do that. Give me the price. God is able. I don't do that. For how much? For how much will I sell my soul and compromise the purpose of God for my life? The enemy would, would chip in some small little things for you to compromise that would destroy bigger things in your life and you think you are escaping. The man looked at it. He said, Sir, this luggage is already more than 2000 I said, Give me the price. Just shine to 3000 I was I was already prepared. I said, Yes, the man. He looked at me and like, What kind of a person are you? <laughs> of a human being you could have just maybe paid me half of that month you know 1500 and you know you you pocket the rest we don't do that there's a lineage we belong to there's a tribe we belong to we are the tribe of the courts <laughs> next time when i come i'm going to speak in a, of this there's a particular tribe i'm going to speak about few of them few of them but there's a particular one. They are the carriers of the utensils used in the temple. Yes. The Kohatites. I will speak about the Kohatites. Who are members of you know, the Levitical house. They are Levites. But their, their mission in their Levitical order. Amen. Is totally different from other tribes. You see. Among the Levites. There are tribes that God separated. Le remember Levites are already separated. But this one are separated from the separated ones. I call them the remnants of the remnants, the Kohatites. Among the Levites, among the clans of their family, their, their calling is to carry the ark of God, to carry the presence of God. That's my desire. I want to be a bearer of his, of his presence. I want to be a bearer of his presence, friends. I don't just want to be a Christian, a preacher of the gospel. I don't just want to be a preacher of the kingdom. I want to be a bearer. They said the, the Quartites must carry, they must carry the ark of God on their shoulder. On their shoulder. David forgot. He put the ark in a new cut. Some of us think when it's new. No, it has to be ancient. He put the cut. He put the ark on a new cut. I could imagine David going to those who make, you know, chariots and say, please make the best chariots for me. Make the best chariot, gold plated. I need to carry the presence of God back to my country. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it was designed to be carried on shoulder of men, it was designed to be carried on the shoulder of men. 
it was designed to be carried on the shoulder of man no matter the distance sometimes we think we're doing God a favor all those nice things we try to put together we try to make it look nice we have we have so dressed the church and the altar that we have sent the Holy Spirit out we've driven the Holy Spirit out by our decorations the decorations of our life and our church and our dressing have driven the Holy Spirit away listen to this scripture then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron take a census of the quarter take a census of the quarter among the Levites by their clans and their families men from 30 to, to 35 years old everyone who is qualified to serve in the work at the tent of meeting this service of the Kohathite at the tent of meeting regarding the most holy place this service of the Kohathite at the tent of meeting regarding the holy things there are things called holy sacred things i'm just trying to read i'm done whenever the camp set out listen to this verse 5 i'm reading numbers 4 you can read it on your own whenever the camp set out aaron and his sons are to go in take down the veil of the curtain cover the ark of the testimony with it they are to place over over this a covering of fine leather spread a solid blue uh, cloth over it and ins insert it insert its poles verse 7 over the table of the presence they are to spread they are to spread uh, a blue cloth and place the plate and cup on it along the bowls and the pitchers of the drink offering the regular bread offering is to remain on it and they shall spread a scarlet cloth over them cover them with fine leather and insert the poles they are to take a blue a blue cloth and cover the lampstand used for light to you know to gather uh, together with with the lamps with the lamps wick trimmers and trays as well as jars of oil which to supply it then they shall wrap it and all its utensils inside a covering of fine leather and put it over the, the carrying frame verse 11 over the gold altar they are to spread a blue cloth cover it with fine leather are you seeing the pattern are you seeing system are you seeing order you say but but Isaiah but this is Old Testament it's old but there's a shadow or the old is a shadow of how we must amen engage the temple of God in the new day anybody who tells you it's Old Testament is past uh, we don't do that we don't do that but there is a standard just like David is dead Moses is dead you know Elizabeth all these people are there but they are still speaking to us today in relating how to live our life and how to serve God and the things of the spirit or else we don't have a pattern we don't have a pattern that's what we are seeing today that the Christianity we are practicing today has no more pattern and that's why foreigners foreign spirit for demonic teachings have invaded our houses The quartites, their duty is to carry all the utensils. They are not the one to go in, into the holies of holy. No, it is Aaron and his sons. But the carrying of those things is the duty of the quartites. Hopefully when we come again, we will look into these things and we will see what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. Friends, Thank you so very much for being part of, you know, our broadcast today. I want to give all the glory and praises to God. Yes, 
We honor him for what he has done, for who he is in our life. Let's continue to journey with him. Friends, you are not doing these things in vain. You are not serving God in vain. You are not living your life and the standard of God in vain. No, no. Vainness is not, amen, is not, is not, you know, a, a part of the order of our life. It is part of the carnal order. They are the one who worship God in vain. We serve God with a purpose and he blesses our service. We have been called, just as the Quartites were called, we are called to find the Asian part and walk in it. I hope this message has brought liberation, perspective, life, direction to you. This is my own life that I'm sharing. God bless you. We'll see you again. Hopefully, tomorrow, if I have the, if the, you know, the, the, the leading of the Lord to do that, then I'll be here tomorrow <clears throat> to share this thing with you. But wisdom is building a house. God bless you. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.